Here we explore the deliberations within the Australian and New Zealand governments in 1964 and 1965 regarding the deployment of troops to Vietnam. Using relevant quotes from government officials and media commentary, we provide an overview of the decision-making processes and public reaction in both countries. This channel's mission is to challenge the Vietnam orthodoxy. Much of what you know about the Vietnam War is either incomplete or false. To support this channel and its mission, please subscribe and like the video. By the early 1960s, the situation in Vietnam was escalating, with the United States increasing its military involvement to support the South Vietnamese government against the Communist North. Both Australia and New Zealand, as part of the CETO alliance and close allies of the US, faced pressure to contribute to the war effort. In mid-1964, the Australian government, led by Prime Minister Sir Robert Menzies, began discussing the possibility of sending troops to Vietnam. The discussions were driven by both strategic interests and alliance obligations. During a cabinet meeting on June 10, 1964, Minister for External Affairs Paul Hasluck emphasised the importance of supporting the US. Our alliance with the United States is crucial for our national security. A failure to support them in Vietnam could weaken our strategic position in the region. The media closely followed these deliberations. The Sydney Morning Herald on June 12, 1964 reported, The Australian government is weighing its options carefully, recognising both the strategic imperatives and the potential risks of deeper involvement in Vietnam. Within the Australian cabinet, discussions about Vietnam were influenced by both strategic and political considerations. Maintaining strong ties with the US was a key factor. In a cabinet meeting on March 15, 1965, Treasurer Harold Holt emphasised the importance of the US alliance. Our relationship with the United States is a cornerstone of our foreign policy. Supporting their efforts in Vietnam is essential for our national security. The Sydney Morning Herald on March 17, 1965 reported on these deliberations. The Australian government is keenly aware of the strategic importance of its alliance with the United States. This consideration is central to the decision-making process regarding Vietnam. The decision to commit troops came in early 1965, as the situation in Vietnam deteriorated further. On April 29, 1965, Prime Minister Menzies announced that Australia would send an infantry battalion to Vietnam. In his announcement, Menzies stated, the Australian government has decided to respond positively to the request from the government of South Vietnam for further military assistance. This decision reflects our commitment to the security of the region and our alliance with the United States. The Australian media provided extensive coverage of the announcement. The Age, on April 30, 1965, editorialised, Australia's decision to send troops to Vietnam is a significant escalation in our involvement. It underscores our commitment to regional security and our alliance obligations, but also brings with it considerable risks and uncertainties. In New Zealand, the government, led by Prime Minister Keith Holyoke, was initially more hesitant. Cabinet discussions in late 1964 and early 1965 reflected concerns about the implications of sending troops to Vietnam. During a cabinet meeting on January 20th, 1965, Minister of Defence Dean Eyre voiced his reservations. While we recognise the strategic importance of supporting our allies, we must also consider the potential political and social ramifications of committing New Zealand forces to Vietnam. The New Zealand Herald on January 22, 1965 reported, The New Zealand government is carefully considering its position on Vietnam, balancing the need to support its allies with concerns about becoming entangled in a protracted conflict. In New Zealand, cabinet discussions reflected the importance of alliance commitments and the potential domestic political impact. During a cabinet meeting on April 10, 1965, Minister of Foreign Affairs Keith Holyoke underscored the significance of supporting allies. Our commitment to collective security through CETO and our alliance with the United States are critical factors in our decision to send troops to Vietnam. The New Zealand Herald on April 12, 1965 highlighted these discussions. The New Zealand government is balancing its alliance obligations with the potential political fallout of sending troops to Vietnam. This delicate balance is shaping the government's approach. By mid-1965, however, 
New Zealand decided to follow Australia's lead. On May 27, 1965, Prime Minister Holyoke announced that New Zealand would send an artillery battery to Vietnam. In his statement, Holyoke declared, After careful consideration, the New Zealand government has decided to send an artillery battery to Vietnam to support the South Vietnamese government and our allies. This decision reflects our commitment to collective security and the fight against communist aggression. The Dominion Post on May 28, 1965 highlighted the decision. New Zealand's commitment to send troops to Vietnam marks a significant step in our foreign policy. While supporting our allies is paramount, the government faces the challenge of managing public opinion and the potential costs of involvement. The Australian public's reaction to the deployment was mixed, with media outlets reflecting diverse viewpoints. Some supported the decision, while others expressed concerns about the implications. The Canberra Times on May 1st, 1965, published an opinion piece supporting the deployment. Australia's decision to send troops to Vietnam is a necessary step to support our allies and ensure regional stability. We must stand firm against the threat of communism. In contrast, The Australian on May 5th, 1965, featured a critical editorial. The decision to send Australian troops to Vietnam raises serious questions about our foreign policy. We must carefully consider the long-term consequences of becoming involved in this conflict. In New Zealand, the media also presented a range of perspectives on the government's decision to send troops to Vietnam. The public debate reflected concerns about the potential costs and benefits of involvement. The press, on May 29, 1965, editorialised in support of the government's decision. New Zealand's commitment to Vietnam is a testament to our dedication to collective security and the fight against communism. We must support our allies in their efforts to stabilise the region. Conversely, the New Zealand Listener on June 1, 1965 published an article expressing scepticism. The decision to send New Zealand troops to Vietnam is fraught with risks. We must ask ourselves whether this is the best course of action for our nation's future. The decisions by Australia and New Zealand to send troops to Vietnam in 1965 were influenced by a combination of strategic considerations, alliance obligations and domestic political factors. Media coverage in both countries reflected the complexity of these decisions and the diverse public reactions. Through detailed cabinet discussions and media commentary, we see how both governments navigated the challenges of supporting their allies while managing domestic concerns. The decisions to deploy troops to Vietnam marked significant moments in the foreign policies of Australia and New Zealand, shaping their roles in the broader geopolitical landscape of the Cold War era.